Hey everybody, so 2024 has officially started, and so you know what that means. It's time for the first book haul of the year. Today I'm going to share books with you that are coming out in January or February, books that I am sure you are going to want on your TBR. So, let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and of course I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. I cannot believe it's 2024, but you know what? That's okay because I think this is going to be a great year. Let's be honest, 2023, 2022, 21, 20, lots went on. Let's hope that 2024, we can all take all this positive energy and head in the right direction. Work, personal lives, book lives, let's do it. And let's start by talking about some amazing books. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore. I think some of them are out that may have come out like late 2023, early 2024, some of them are coming out in late January and February, but you can get your hands on them if you order them from your independent bookstore or get your library to get you a copy as soon as possible. So the first book I'm going to tell you about is actually the book I read on the first day of the year. Um, I stole this from Simon Savage. He told me this years and years ago that he always starts a new book on the new year. He doesn't take tra he doesn't travel reading from the previous year into the new year, and I loved that idea. So for the last few years, I have followed suit. And I decided to start with a book that is about one of my favorite topics, the bookstores. And that is Welcome to the Hunandong Bookshop by Wang Bo Room. Room? Room, uh, translated from the Korean by Shana Tan, and this is out from Bloomsbury. It comes out in February of 2024, um, and this is everything I need. One, can we just take a moment, that cover? Okay, I know my husband's going to put a better picture up here for you, but this is the story of a woman, Yongju, Yongju, uh, who uh, quits her job and opens a bookstore in a tiny community. And it's all about what the bookstore brings to her life, to the people who become current patrons of the bookstore. It's about relationships, both with books, with writing, with language, and with other people. And as we go through the novel, we learn more about what has brought all these people to the bookstore. There is a um, character who becomes sort of like the head of the coffee shop, who is sort of trying to figure out at the beginning of the book, where does he want to go? He's just really looking for a job. He has high expectations on him, but then he finds his passion in making coffee. Um, the bookstore and books, so many titles are dropped in this book um, that I started to look for them, and some of them are not translated into English yet, which made me so, so sad. Um, I just thought it was just lovely. It is really lovely. I will say that some of the time, it, every once in a while, it goes off to like outside the bookstore, outside the relationships, and I was all always sort of waiting to get back to the, to the bookstore in that sort of thing. Um, and it gets a little bit, what is it? There's like a lot of moral lessons in it. And um, I guess that can sort of grate on you. I found them very charming. Um, and I just really loved the message behind this book, the power of words and stories and language and friendships and all of that. I adored it. So please pick up. Um, welcome to the Hunan Hunam Dong Bookshop by Wang Bo Room, uh, translated from the Korean by Shana Tan, out from Bloom Bloomsbury. I hope I did okay on all those names because I did love that book and I really, really want you all to pick it up. Um, I'm going to do three books by Europa. I'm not exactly sure um, when the first two came out or if they're just coming out. Um, Europa was lovely and sent me finished copies and I'm always so thankful to them. You know I'm a Europa stand. Um, the first one I want to tell you about is No One Dies Yet by Kobe Ben Ben. This is again out from Europa. This is a story that takes place in 2019 in Ghana, the year of return. I don't know, um, I didn't know anything about this, but this is in 2019, Ghana invited Black to sport 
Singaporeans, which is a word I don't think I have ever said and only read, to return and get to know the land of their enslaved ancestors. We have three young men, Elton, Vincent, and Scott, arrive from America to explore Ghana and really experience the country's underground queer scene. Um, and we get two separate narrators. One is um, Kobe, who is sort of it shows them this um, life of the queer Ghana and all of that, sort of the energy and exuberance of all of that. And the other voice is um, Nana, who is like the traditional religious voice that is sort of the antithesis to Kobe. Um, there's a murder that goes down and the book, um, I like, it says, an often funny tale of murder that will delight readers of authors like Highsmith, Graham Greene, uh, Achibe and Alan Mabinko, and I don't know who that is, clearly need to look that person up, but debut novel, totally excited about this one when I read about it, super, I don't think I've read many books set in Ghana, a few, but not enough, um, so No One Dies Yet by Kobe Ben Ben, out from Europa, I'm really excited about that one. We are going to go from one book that has a murder to another book, but this one seems darker, and that's the city of live, the city of the living by Nicola La Gioia. Oh God, my Italian is terrible, people. Um, this one is translated from the Italian by Anne Goldstein. What can't Anne Goldstein do, by the way? She translates everything, and it's always amazing, right? This takes place in March of 2016. It's um, it's about a murder that occurs in this apartment building. These two men who, every, you know how everyone always says they were just the, the nicest of people. There was nothing ever wrong with them. Compl they murder this woman out of cold blood, and it's the investigation into that. Um, and I love, it says, razor sharp, unputable, and, um, and provocative. It tells the story of not only a single monstrous crime, but of human nature itself, of the tension between the drive to oppress and the desire to be free, of who we are and who we can and sometimes do become. So, yeah, I've got to sit down and just read some stuff about murder. That's what it comes down to. Uh, the City of Living by Nicola Lagioa, um, and that is a terrible, terrible interpretation of that beautiful Italian name, um, and translated from the Italian by Anne Goldstein, um, out from Europa. And finally is, and that one I believe is out, I think I've seen that one at the bookstore, Finally, my final Europa title is one that's actually not coming out until later in January. Um, and I'm going to hold it up, but my husband will actually put the final title because Europa sent me an arc that doesn't have the official... Uh, uh, what's it called? A cover on it. But this is The Fair Folk by Sue Briston, Bristow, Bristow. Um, and I read Sealskin by her and loved that a few years ago. So when I heard she had a new book coming out, I was so excited. And this one takes place with fairies and I was all about it. Our main character, it's like 1959. She's eight years old. Her name is Felicity. And she sort of makes a deal with the queen of the fairies. Um, she's uh, She lives on like this dying farm. Uh, fast forward, she is in college at university and um, she has two companions which are sort of like these bodyguards sent with her by the queen and she learns very quickly that having a deal with the fairies is not everything that she thought it would be and the consequences of this gift that they gave her come to fruition and she has to figure out what to do. I'm all in it. Um, I loved Sealskin. I thought it was also a play on an old fairy tale and um, I think she's a fantastic writer so I'm super excited to read The Fair Folk by Sue Bristow out from Europa later this month in January. Okay, coming out in February is a fantasy novel, um, An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is coming out from Red Hook. Um, all I'm going to say about this, and this is why I was like so excited when it arrived, it is a campus novel set at a all-girls school that has sapphic romance and the person who mentors these two girls who are antagonists but also maybe become more than friends, um, is the poetry teacher, which I just think is so absurd and I love everything about it. Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to go and I don't care. I'm going to dive in to An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson out from Red Hook. I think it sounds fantastic. Okay, so just a couple more books to put on your radar. 
The next one I want to talk about is Plastic by Scott Guild. And this is out from Pantheon and it comes out in February as well. Um, and do you, there was a book I read a few years ago. I think it was from Unnamed Press called The Paper Man or The Paper Boy, which this book just reminds me a lot of in sort of that same sort of thought process. I am going to use the book to help us out here because it just explains this so well. Erin is a plastic girl living in a plastic world. Every day she eats a breakfast of boiled chicken, then conveys her articulated body to Tablet Town, where she sells smart bodies, wearable tech that immerses her fellow figurines in a virtual world, a refuge from real life's brutal wars and eco-terrorists insurgency. If you cut her, she will not bleed, but figurines can still be cracked by gunfire and crumble from nuclear fallout. One day, a terror attack at work leads Aaron to meet Jacob, a blind figurine with whom she feels an instant connection. Together, they start to explore the wonders of the virtual reality landscape. But just as they begin to heal from their trauma, secrets from Aaron's past threaten to crack the facade she's built around her life, revealing everything vulnerable beneath. Y'all, that sounds so good. And it came with this really cool uh, card. I don't know if you'll be able to see it when I held it up, but I'm totally bought into this. I think the cover is fantastic. Um, and I am super excited about Plastic by Scott Guild out from Pantheon Books in February. Okay. Last but not least, I have two books left. I don't know why I said last but not least. Um, very different books, actually. <laughs> The next book I want to tell you about is Follow by the Lark, Followed by the Lark by Helen Humphreys. This is out from FSG. You know that I personally obsess about books about authors. I think that they are some of my favorite reads every single year. I just love them so very, very much. And this is a um, sort of reimagining of the life of Henry David Thoreau. After the loss of his best friend and his brother, he goes to Walden Pond. This book is I've actually started this one because I think it's one of those ones that you can read sort of in in moments because everything is very, very short and they almost have sort of like this poetic nature to them. Um, and it's, you know, Henry David Thoreau, it's nature, it's grief, it's humanity, it's all of that sort of stuff told in these beautiful little like... Um, I don't know, almost like uh, flash fiction sections, if that means anything to you. Um, I have started it, loved it. I think it's going to be fantastic. I think the cover is beautiful. I don't need to hold it up because it's probably standing there. That is Followed by the Lark by Helen Humphreys out from FSG, and it comes out on February 13th of 2024. Last but not least in this video is a fantasy novel coming out in February um, that Orbit sent me. If you've watched my fantasy wrap-up, you know how much of a fan I am of Orbit. And Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan is coming out in February. Um, and I'm going to use the back of this one, too, to help us out a little bit. You know, fantasy books always have a lot going on. And sometimes when you try to summarize them um, in a haul, you don't do a great job. So let's do this. In the partially flooded city... So welcome to Tian Kwai, shining pearl of the civilization and safe haven for humans and fathom folk alike. Or at least that's how it appears at first. In the partially flooded city, humans are quite literally on top, peering down from skyscrapers at fathom folk, sirens, sea witches, kelpies, and kappas who live in the polluted waters below. For half siren Mira, promotion to the captain of border guard means an opportunity for reform. But as if earning the trust and respect of her human colleagues wasn't hard enough, everything Mira has worked toward is put in jeopardy when a water dragon is exiled to the city. I'm all for a dragon story. You know how much I love that in my fantasy. Um, new arrival Nami is an aristoc <laughs> aristocratic water dragon with an opinion on everything. Frustrated by the lack of progress, Nami throws her lot in with an anti-human extremist group, leaving Mira to find the headstrong youth before she makes everything worth worse. When extremists sabotage the annual boat race, violence erupts, as does the clampdown on Fathom Folk rights. Even Nami realizes her new friends are not what they seem. But she and Mira must decide if the cost of change is worth it, or if Tain Kwai, I can't say that city name, I'm sorry, should be left to drown. I'm super excited about this book. I think it sounds really great. I'm all about having my fantasy reads to get me through every month. I love them so much. And I want to thank Orbit once again for always spoiling me. So that's a stack. That's a little book haul. It's not that many books. This could have been longer. I tried to keep some of them out so I could focus on these books and make sure that you pick them all up. So let me see if I can hold them up here. Here we go. 
Here we go. That's a good stack of books. Pre-order, order, get them in your hands as soon as possible. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate you coming by and listening to me talk about books. As always, I encourage you to read local, uh, sorry, read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading, everyone. Bye!